Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am trying to film many videos today. It is so hot, but this is the only time I have. It's the weekend, my husband's watching our baby, and uh, it's between naps, and so, <laughs> whew. Yeah, if you see me sweating, it's because, yes, I'm dying. So, <laughs> I have Moscato, we're gonna make it through together. But if you literally see sweat dripping, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for us, <laughs> because it's so hot. Um, but this is the only time I have. So let's get it started. Uh, these are the best queer books of 2021 part two and I have five to talk about. So let's jump into it. He Made Me Do It, okay? Uh, this is by a Fijian author and it is a MM forbidden romance. It features Zane who is a 17 year old closeted and gay uh, Muslim boy who's very straight laced. Um, and then Asher, who is 17 years old and openly gay, and he's kind of like the good time guy. Like, he loves to party, he loves to just like be funny, um, and he's much different than like his brother. So, the whole thing is yes, this is a forbidden like brother romance, but they're not really brothers in the technicals. Like, they're stepbrothers, but their parents married when they were already seven, both 17 and they never knew each other. So, like, when they first meet, they're like attracted to each other, um, but. Yeah, it's not like they grew up together at all. The first half of this book is absolutely amazing because what you're seeing is like the tension between them when nothing is happening, but they're still like forced to be in proximity to each other and they're like, oh, I don't know, this is gonna be weird. Um, and especially you're seeing the very religious son really struggling um, with coming to terms with himself, like his true identity and his religion um, and it's taking it very seriously and then the second half of the book comes along and it's like a, like a lot of sex like too much like a little too much you know like if it had been half the amount I really would have liked that um, because the first half of the book was so superior and like just really good I really enjoyed this when I read it and I will be reading the recent release by Z Shine Storm soon it is a Hades and Persephone retelling with a twist where it says like instead of Hades wanting Persephone, what if Hades wanted Persephone's brother? And I'm like, <laughs> I love Hades and Persephone retellings and um, yeah, why not make it a queer twist? So I'm excited about that. So my number four pick is A Winter's Earl, okay? And this was so darling. This is like Regency England, but make it gay, essentially. So, um, this is following two people. One is Sherborne, who is an infamous poet who bought like a crumbling English castle. And he's like very dramatic. He loves to cause a good stir in society. He's very famous for his like indecent poetry. And there is also Richard, who is very buttoned up and straight laced. And he is an Earl who is li living in Italy because he has been exiled after being outed as gay all those years ago and it was basically like facing being hung or being exiled to another country so he lives in Italy when and he does not speak to his ex-lover anymore like they do not speak but one day uh, the straight-laced Earl receives a letter from his old lover um, saying it's a matter of life and death I need you to come here now that one letter gets them back together in the same castle and I love a good like forced proximity trope it snows heavily and they can't leave so they're forced to be in each other's company again and it may sound very tropey and it is very tropey except that I totally totally loved it in this particular book so there is forced proximity there is like miscommunication there's second chance romance there is delayed gratification uh mutual pining and i just really really loved the way that the author explored like when they first get together again after like i think it's 10 years they want to fall back into their old routines but they're no longer those like teenagers that they were those like young people that they were so it just like doesn't work so the book actually shows them like trying to work through problems and talking about old old things that happened and trying to move on and forgive and that's usually something that's like completely left out of romance novels and I think it's a shame because this novel included it and I found it so believable and I appreciated it so much because then eventually when like spoiler alert they do get together it makes it that more 
much more impactful. Um, so I really recommend this. It is, I read it during Christmas and it was really Christmassy vibes. It was like snowy in a castle right before Christmas. And yes, I really recommend this. I thought it was really, really great. Um, okay, third up is one that probably everyone knows by now. This is Pet by Akweke Emezi, who is a non-binary Nigerian author. And Pet is following a young trans girl who one day cuts her finger on her mother's painting and summons this interdimensional monster hunter that she names Pet. And Pet tells her that in this town where everyone says there are no more monsters and monsters have been hunted and are extinct, there is a monster walking among uh, someone that she loves. So her and the monster hunter are gonna hunt this monster down and like, you know, bring justice. Um, I thought this was absolutely fantastic. I loved everything about it. It should be a movie. It would be absolutely so amazing. I think that the descriptions of Pet in particular would be amazing on the big screen. Um, and, you know, Jam and her family have such a sweet dynamic and her and her dynamic with her best friend is also extremely well done and adorable. Um, and the prequel, Bitter, is coming out I think in February or March this year. So I'm really excited about that as well. I can't wait to read it. It's about Jam's mom, the painter. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So we are to my number two pick, which is the Monstrous series by Lily Main. So I have talked about this a lot. I hope that by now, if you have similar taste to me, you have read this because if not, why are you fucking around and not reading this series? Like, what are you doing? Uh, so I'm just gonna talk about the first one, but I actually recommend all of them. I'm obsessed with this series and I am like eagerly awaiting the next book. Like it's a book where I read them on Kindle and I'm like, ooh, should I buy all four of them at one time? Like IRL, like to have on my shelves, like should I do it? Um, yeah, so that's the level of obsession we're talking about here. Um, and this is set in, shocker, <laughs> a dystopian uh, world. It's kind of post-apocalyptic because a rift was opened between Earth and um, a monster realm. And monsters poured through that rift onto Earth. And of course, like the military went crazy and like bombed and nuked all the areas where the monsters were coming through. So they created like a, a huge void in the middle of America that's just like a wasteland. So in the first book, we are following a soldier who is terrible at his job. So he came from a city where there was great poverty and he decided to enlist in the military in order to like not starve. So um, he never wanted to kill anyone. He never wanted to do anything like that, but he also doesn't want to like die. Uh, so he is in the military and the military is all upset because a monster known as the Soul Eater is about to appear. He appears every three years and he kills thousands of people as he goes across the same route in America every three years. Um, and they're like, okay, we're gonna set a trap. We're gonna send a team, we're gonna send, and they're like, we're gonna send, okay. And the military is like, we're gonna send a B team over there as a distraction because they're expendable. And then we're gonna have a team waiting on this hill and they're gonna capture or kill the soul eater um, while it's distracted with B team. So our main character is on B team because he can't fight for shit. So uh, he is the only one that does not try to fight soul e the Soul Eater and die. So Soul Eater realizes he's not fighting him at all. He like dropped his gun. So he's like, okay, I'm not gonna hurt that guy. So when the Soul Eater approaches uh, our main character, whose name is Danny, I don't think I mentioned that, um, Danny actually just faints because he's so nervous. And when Danny wakes up, actually, he is left with a message from like the command that says like, you must come to the interrogation room right now because the monster is only gonna talk to you. Like the monster saying he's only gonna talk to you. Danny is interrogating the soul eater and things kind of go from there. So this series is very dark, but they all have MM pairings where it's usually um, a human and a monster. And in this world, there are many types of monsters from like amorphous mist monsters to like rolling balls of teeth monsters to crazy huge bizarre monsters that like are not humanoid at all to very humanoid monsters that just have like slightly different features. Like the Soul Eater for instance has kind of a, a big human body, like picture a big human and they have like really sharp kind of talons that have black tips and then they always wear a hood and they have horns. But other than that, they're like kind of human-ish, right? So um, yeah, number one, I think was my favorite because it got me into the series, but the Reich, which is I think number three, 
is my second favorite. It's also so good. Um, I love this world because there are so many different types of monsters that as you meet the characters, they don't know the monsters either because there's so many types that they're like, is this monster poisonous? Is it friendly? What is it? What are we doing? Is it going to kill me? And you experience it alongside them, uh, which I really love. And also, as the series goes on, uh, the world expands. Like, she really does a great job expanding out all the different elements of what society would do. So, oh my god, <laughs> by the fourth book, I'm completely hooked. I'm like, what is gonna happen with, like, that thing over there? And when is this person gonna hook up again with that person because they got separated back in book two and, like, their best friend, like, what's happening? What's happening? So yeah, I'm in love with the series and I really want you to read it and I really want to read the next book when it's out. So let's move on to my number one pick, which has FF Rep. So this is the offset. This is an amazing, 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 amazing eco dystopian. Um, but it's uber dark. So if you're expecting anything else, who do you think I am? <laughs> so this is set in a world where pollution is extremely bad. The seas have risen and basically, um, everything is going to shit. There's not enough food that people are trying to leave their country and find housing elsewhere, but there's like no housing to be had, no safety to be had, no medicine anywhere. Um, and so to deal with this overpopulation issue, um, there is a rule where when a baby is born, when that baby reaches 18, they have to choose one of their parents to be publicly executed in order to offset their birth, in order to keep population under control. So we open and one of our main characters is the daughter of lesbian moms. And essentially, she has to make a choice because she is nearly 18. So one of her moms she absolutely loves. And this mom is an ER nurse or ER doctor in an uh, inner city hospital and has lived her entire life at the service of others. And she absolutely loves this mom. The other mom is a mom that she never got along with, is emotionally cold to her, she thinks, and uh, she kind of hates and never liked. Um, however, that mom is the leading scientist uh, that might cure the global pollution problem. Uh, so that mom is making these trees that can filter out pollutants in the air and they plant the entirety of I think Greenland with these trees um, and she is producing her work to basically save the earth from pollution which will kill humanity soon. Uh, so this daughter is left with like this absolutely horrible horrible choice and it is really a character study more than anything. So you know the world but really, it's following each of the moms and the daughter in these days leading up to this public execution, which you know is coming. You don't know who she's going to choose, but you know it's absolutely unavoidable. And yeah, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. And like the setting is absolutely amazing. Um, and the idea is haunting. Uh, the reason that this gets number one on here is because truly, truly, whoo, this book like gave me nightmares and I thought about it so much. And I talked to my husband about it, like, what would you do in this situation? Like, it's absolutely mind-boggling to think about. Um, but yeah, this is an extremely haunting book. I thought it was extremely well done. Um, I don't know why it's not getting a lot of hype. I think that it really deserves it. So if that sounds interesting to you, please do check it out. Um, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So those are my favorite queer books of the second half of 2021. For the part one, I will leave the link down below, of course. Please let me know the best queer books you read last year or this year. Could be either one. Uh, and I will talk to you soon in another video. Lots of love. Bye!